let's now welcome on board the management of Sula Vineyards. That's definitely been the newsmaker all through this morning. Let's try and get a little bit more clarity around what is this uh, wine scheme that the Maharashtra government has uh, revised and what does it really mean for Sula Vineyards? Rajiv Saman joins in on the show right now. Rajiv, hi, morning. Thanks for speaking with us. Uh, you know, help us understand this extension that the Maharashtra government has come about with um, of this particular scheme. How does it impact your company? Good morning. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, this is really good news. This is something that we've been waiting for for the last three years, the continuation of the uh, WIP scheme in Maharashtra. In a nutshell, what this scheme does is basically if you grow grapes in Maharashtra, produce wine and sell it in Maharashtra, then you are eligible for a refund on the VAT uh, that is paid uh, per bottle. So it's been an important um, uh, factor for sure so far, and we've been waiting for a number of years to hear the good news on the continuation. Finally, that uncertainty goes away, so that's definitely a big relief. Um, and it also means that 140 crores of past dues will now flow into our coffers we hope a large chunk of it before March 31st. So that's really it in a nutshell. There would be no earnings impact for FY25 and beyond because of this new scheme. Can I safely infer that? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, the scheme has been extended for a period of uh, eight years. That is four years retrospective until March 24, and then another four years after that. So until March 24, uh, no change, no cap, which is, of course, really good news from our point of view. Um, from April 1, uh, 24 onwards, there is a, a cap that's been brought in of 20 crore per unit. I just want to clarify that that is not per company. Sula ourselves, as per the excise definition, we have three units in Maharashtra. So for Sula, that implies a cap for FY25 of 60 crores. And is that 60 crore good enough for you or you'll have to create one more capacity in order to take that benefit? So, Nikunj, that's a good question. You know, this is always a moving target. As I said, right now we have three units. Uh, we always have uh, discussions uh, uh, going on with other players, etc. Um, you know, we are, we are not unhappy with it. Uh, you know, maybe it's going to shave a, a few crores off here and there. Uh, definitely, we'll have to work at it and see how we can get the, the best out of it. But um, all in all, it's definitely a huge positive. Um, you know, the, with this uh, 140 crores, you can imagine that for a company of our size, it's a huge amount. Uh, today, we are borrowing about 250 crores at about uh, 8%. So a large chunk of that will go down to, uh, will go to pay down some of that debt. Plus, we have some ambition, uh, ambitious CapEx plans. For FY25, we want to build the lowest cost wine cellar anywhere in the world for our low cost wines. So this is going to go a, a long way towards uh, funding that. 140 crore, will this come with riders, which is that this is pre-tax and tax would be paid on it. It is subject to some conditions in terms of the refund. Uh, sorry, I, I, no, I the can't clarify crore, that the... right now. There's no, there's no rider as such. Uh, remember, this is a state level thing, so this has nothing to do with the you know central uh, corporate uh, income tax. Uh, it's uh, state level. There's no tax uh, payable. That's a that's a clear amount. That's a net amount. Uh, that's that's a cap. Net of tax. Right. So any sort of impact, maybe you can share with us in terms of ballpark figures as to as to what the impact would be on an EBITDA level, FY twenty five onwards, say. Uh, it's too early for that. Uh, I just want to point out that this uh, resolution, this GR came out after market hours yesterday. So we are just in the process of studying it closely. And I think in a couple of working days or so, we'll have much more clarity on what exactly is going to be the impact going forward. We're also going to be working on how to you know, mitigate that impact and get the best out of whatever has been announced. So that that is uh, ongoing at this point. In the fine print. You've read the fine print. I've read the headlines. Tell us the devil in the detail. Once we know, we'll be back on the show to, to <laughs> talk about the, the devil on, in the details. Okay. But just to set the you know context here, unlike what a lot of brokerages published in the morning, this is not going to be having an impact in terms of the EPS and this is certainly not going to have a 15-20% impact on earnings. That's interpretation number one. Second, 140 crore net 
comes back into your balance sheet which could be used to retire debt, something which could add immediately to your cost of capital and will increase your EBITDA. And C, in order to really take true benefits of it, you'll have to add, you'll have to add more wineries. Nikunj, you know, you're, you're already uh, leading us uh, in, the, in the way that we need to go. So uh, I'm not going to argue with anything that you have said. Only one thing that, of course, the, the retiring of the debt, that will not be uh, at the EBITDA level. That will help at the uh, PAT level because the uh, interest line will come uh, below uh, EBITDA. But uh, that will uh, mitigate any, uh, the, uh, any impact on, on PAT. Uh, this might have a little bit more impact on EBITDA, but because of the interest saving on the 140 crore, uh, you know that will uh, definitely have a salutary impact on the uh, on the on the pact. Contrary, if I look and at yes, the... it's always uh, you know Sula is always in discussions. You know, it's a lot of wineries uh, have been struggling, uh, the smaller wineries, and you know we are their natural port of call uh, when they look uh, to their future, and we are always engaged in discussions. You will recall that we uh, we acquired a winery uh, York uh, a winery uh, just a couple of years ago. And um, needless to say that we are in discussions with a few others. So the three units is is not uh, the end of the story. I distinctly remember, Rajiv, every time we would interact with you, if not the third, the fourth question was certainly about this advantage you were getting in, from the state of Maharashtra. So now can I safely say that, look, the question no longer is valid because clarity for ATR has come now. It's no longer valid, and you know I take this opportunity to thank the government of Maharashtra um, for for taking care of this. Uh, it's such an important industry. It's such a flag bearer for for fruit processing, um, for agri business in Maharashtra. It's really a it's a proud Make in India uh, brand. You know, Sula today is a brand that's known across the world. It's one of the few Indian consumer brands that you're going to find on uh, you know restaurant tables across the world. Um, it's proud. Uh, very proud make in India and very proud make in Maharashtra. And it's really changed the face of Nasik. So this is really going to help. Appreciate your time and all of that clarity. Thanks so much for joining in.